When you're first learning to paint, it's a good idea to start with some basic shapes. Here's a few that we're going to use. In our first step, the block in, we measure the horizontals and the verticals, and the distance the objects are from each other and to the edges of the canvas. Then we look through the forms, we look around them for their construction, and this begins the next phase of our drawing where we lay in all of the lines that we need so that we can see that volume for our next phase of the notan or blocking in the values. Notan is an old Japanese word for the measure of light and dark, and is how the old artists used to measure their flat tones when making their woodblock prints and their screen art. The first set of values we look for would be the relationship of values between the objects. How do they separate from each other in space? What's their value range? And that helps us then attribute the shadow pattern on top of those. That's the second notan that we look for, the intensity of the light source. How bright or how dull is the light? And once we understand these concepts, this is how we measure mood in our illustration work. Value equals color, color equals value, they're the same thing. We train to take value or extract value out of color, but then we have to put it right back in. So the rest of this picture, we're going to modulate the surfaces using color, and here's how we're going to look at them. The wireframes on those fruits earlier make up little spaces called facets, a very similar term to another one that we've heard in painting called tiling or tiles coined by Frank Riley back in the 1950s for a bunch of artists trying to figure out what those were called. He was using an art form that was close to him with a similar aesthetic called the mosaic, like we have now 3D that can very well describe the idea of what we're trying to do here in paint. Norman Rockwell, Paul Cezanne, and other painters that use a very bravura brushstroke show these tiles on their canvases. Good training tools to help us understand what they are. I want to start by taking things away. So here's our normal shot. This has everything in it, but I want to take the air out of it first. Here's the air gone. And with the air gone, you can see straight to the wall, and the wall is all brightly lit. Let's take everything else away. And now you can start to see how much everything influences each other, but I don't think it's quite as easy to see until we start doing this. See how much the floor influences everything? How much the lemon does? How much the apple does as well? And then of course, how much the orange influences everything else? You can see things darkened down just a little bit or warmed up a little bit uh, because of the color influence. So to map out these colors on our palette, we want to build in color strings, and these are done in a value order, regardless of what the string might be. And there are several different options to choose from. Here's just a few. You can go from warm to cool, you can go from light to dark, value to chroma, or tint to tone. And as long as they're in a value order and they're all next to each other on the palette, then you shouldn't have any problem mixing and matching your colors together to make things work. Before we look at our color strings for the fruits here, we want to cover this effect, the Fresnel effect. It's on everything you see, and you can't escape it. It's sometimes why things can be difficult to paint. We can see it most clearly on bodies of water or any reflective surface that has something seen through it. The further away something gets, the more reflective it becomes. The closer it is, the more absorbent it is. And that's why skin tones are such a monster to paint. Between that and subsurface scattering, uh, skin can be a really difficult thing to paint. And here's both of those instances with uh, reflectivity from the Fresnel effect and subsurface scattering. So this is on every object and we have to take this into effect when we color mix. We have the Fresnel effect to think about and we have these value strings. So those together build us a recipe of sorts. And if we keep them in value order, we shouldn't have any issues building our picture. So with this recipe, we have our direct light, our indirect light, our local color. Here's our local colors. Here are the reflected lights on the surface. And those are the two things we mix together within their spaces to make the color of the object within that little facet. And if we put all those facets together next to each other, then it should look lit and it should look like the object, both together at the same time. 
So now as you watch this painting come up in double time, um, you'll notice that I'm not painting facet by facet. It is a little bit larger where I'm reaching, but I'm still thinking that way. Every little part of each object has a facet to it and those facets change. So as I get closer to the end of the painting, I am thinking about those subtleties and rolling those forms just a little bit more to get them to feel a little bit more volumetric or a little bit more believable, convincing, or three-dimensional. I hope you found this information useful. I'm going to be breaking these concepts down even further with more videos in the future, as well as other videos with other subject matter that wasn't here. If you like this video, please share. And thank you again. Come by Lemonade.com and visit. I'll have a lot of information and useful tools there for you here and in the future. Take care. Lemonade. Lemonade.